In July of 2005, Ugandans overwhelmingly voted in a constitutional referendum bringing to an end a 19-year ban on multi party politics. This was described as a masterstroke of democratic genius. But let's be honest, has it delivered on good governance? Democracy is not where you tick and say, I have, I have went and voted and ticked the ballot box. So that's democracy. It's a culture. We cannot talk about democracy until we have dealt with the question of who actually owns Uganda. It's even more pernicious, the idea that you have um, a population that realizes the enslavement, but at the same time are given particular rituals by which then they participate in a sort of mockery of democracy. 80% of the constitution is heaping responsibility on the president. After over two decades of relative stability, Ghana is seen as a beacon of peace and good governance. Since 1992, Ghana has been changing her governments without any destabilization. An achievement which has made her a hub of democracy in the sub-Saharan part of Africa. The population can be extremely forgiving if they are aware that you have saved them of, from worse, you know, turmoil by stepping down. It's a crossroad. Two things can happen. Mismanagement of this transition can lead to a failed state. Corruption, it's been said, is worse than prostitution. While the latter may endanger the morals of an individual, the former invariably endangers the morals of an entire nation. I don't believe for a minute that Kazinda was acting alone. I really don't think so. I don't believe for a minute that the permanent secretary of the prime minister's office knew nothing about it. Because this is the head of the institution, the one responsible for accountability. Does he run a ministry without policies, procedures, and regulations that govern finances? What has happened to the systems that run governments? Public awareness of the dangers of corruption is important for citizens to resist the temptation of corruption, report it, and be willing to act as witnesses in court. We are more interested now in value for money audit. We are now more interested in, in the three E's of utilization of money. You want to get to a level to say if you have stolen money for pensioners and the pensioners have died, maybe there is some man's not an element to put on you. If we can attribute their death to their failure to access their pension. On every 26th day of January, the National Resistance Movement adds yet another year in power. At the most recent, the MED 27. Then, President Yoweri Museveni poured out medals of national service to over 30,000 deserving Ugandans, including Olympic gold medal winner Stephen Kiprotich. But despite this show of harmony, not all is well in the public sector. UPE is built on a very weak foundation that we have no teachers again. Schools inspectors are very few. The NCDC, which is the authority, has proven that the children are lacking basic skills. When the process goes smoothly, it will result in delays. When it is abused, it will result in corruption. When somebody doesn't deliver, and one of the weaknesses we have in Uganda, a lot of people, 90% of people don't want to touch anybody who does something wrong. It is like we have fright of non-performers. Is it about time that Uganda should abandon her current policies in the different sectors? Because they don't seem to be working. And if so, what are the alternatives?